Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our uh, Zoom worship. Um, hopefully, this will be our uh, uh, last one of these for a little bit. Uh, so just a few announcements. Next Sunday, we are going to uh, we are going to attempt a drive in service and there will be a uh, like a Facebook live uh, feed. So that way, if you don't want to actually drive into the church, uh, you can still catch worship that way. So that will be next Sunday. Um, we haven't picked a time just yet. So we're sort of wondering about since it's uh, outside, whether or not we need to. Um, you know, adjust the time for worship service, but we will let you know for sure. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, our sanctuary safety team has met once. We will be continuing to meet. Uh, that's the group of people who are um, charged with and have taken on the the uh, lovely, challenging burden of figuring out how and when to get into the sanctuary and doing that safely. So they are continuing to meet. Um, this so as things sort of balance out or perhaps it just needs to be more in the midst of uh fun ups and down craziness um you know typically during the summer we do a some sort of ser sermon series and for the past three summers that has been uh me picking a book for y'all to read and we read it together and then i talk about it we're not going to do that this year and we're going to do sort of like um kind of how we do in bible study and basically sort of turn it over to you and say is that if there's any topic that you want me to preach on during the summer if you will just send me like a text or an email or call the church office and put it on the uh put it on the answering machine or tell Michelle. Uh, so it'll sort of be a free for all for the summer based off of what you want me to talk about. Now, um, if we get a bunch of different requests, uh, there's a chance that yours might not be talked about, but I will try uh, to get to everybody's. Um, oh yeah, uh, this morning we will be celebrating in Holy Communion in the Moravian Church. We practice open communion, meaning that anybody who is a lover of Jesus and wants to partake is welcome, and we will be doing that uh, towards the end of our service today. So if you don't have uh, bread and something to drink, if you'll go ahead and take care of that now. Uh, a second ago, I asked for some, uh, asked for prayer requests, and... Um, just want to share a couple of them with you. Um, Bill Plyler is asking for continued prayers as his eye heals. And then um, Anna shared that Bald Barbara Waltrip's having a rough time with her congestive heart failure. So a continued prayer for Barbara. Um, and then I have a, an acquaintance from high school who lives somewhere out here and he works for the blue. Uh, he randomly passed away um, Friday morning. His name is Tommy Lewis. He has three children, all under 11. Um, and his wife is Renee. So if you would keep him in your prayers, as well as David Holston. He is David Holston's mother passed away. And David Holston is the director of the uh, you know, Sunnyside Ministries for the Moravian Church. So if you would keep his mother Eleanor in your prayers and all this is listed on the group chat so uh, you can you don't have to write down everything you can just go to that and then uh, Pam on her shoulder surgery which is upcoming this week so if you will uh, you know uh, either take a screenshot of that list or jot them down sometime during our worship service so you can be in prayer for those things let's open with a word of prayer now God, as we gather, we gather to proclaim you. We gather to proclaim our identity as followers and of believers in you. Lord, we pray that you continue to touch our hearts. We ask that you continue to lift us up in our time of trial. We ask that you continue to make your presence known in all of uh, the situations that we are in. God, for our brothers and our sisters who uh, are struggling perhaps more than we, we ask that your guidance be with them. We ask that your energy be within us to continue to be your hands and your feet. And we ask that a sense of love bind everybody together. God, for those things which uh, weigh us down in our own heart, we ask that you continue to walk with us. We ask that you continue to remind us that you are indeed working beside us in all the places in our lives which need your presence and need your work. Lord, we ask for the uh, reminder of the ability to find you in all the places in our lives. 
help us to continue to um, see those little places which you continually try to break into and to uh, illuminate and to conquer. God, we give you thanks on this day for all the promises that we know and all the promises that we are going to talk and hear about. God, most of all, we give you thanks for life and the life that comes through your Son. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. So now I'm going to invite you to start off uh, or to join me in singing uh, our hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. you to join me in uh, a responsive prayer uh, based off of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all of his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquity, who redeems our lives, who crowns us with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies us with good as long as we live so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who respect and love him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him, for he knows how we were made. 
he remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who love and respect him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandment. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Now I invite you to join me in singing the hymn, Spirit of God Who Dwells. This is our scripture text for this morning, uh, Romans 5, 1 through 8. Paul says, This, therefore, since you were justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he has given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So um, I wanted to, before we go into this time of uh, Holy Communion, just to, I just wanted to share a little bit, uh, some thoughts about this. And to really understand this passage, we have to deal with the words suffering and boasting. 
Now, uh, suffering is easily defined by a Google search, and it will say, um, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, I believe it says, the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. That is what they do. That is what they call suffering. And uh, I want to throw a few more distinctions in there. Um, the two major types of suffering that we have to sort of keep in mind is uh, universal suffering and individual suffering. Universal suffering is things like poverty, genocide, depression, famine. Uh, and individual can include those universal things, but also might be things like your health or your family or your you know, just your own financial situation. So two important distinctions to remember, universal and individual. And there's a couple of things about, um, about, the, about suffering that I want to just want you to keep in mind. One of which is just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's sort of like um, you can never have to worry about food and famine still exist at the same time. Or um, you can never have to worry about money and poverty still exist at the same time. So just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And that's true for all types of suffering. Um, another thing that's interesting about suffering is that the big stuff nullifies the little stuff. Not like it's not there, it's just the big stuff tends to take priority um, of uh, time and energy and focus. Sort of like if you are starving, you are probably not going to worry about how crazy your family is. And if everybody in your crazy family is starving, most everybody is going to tend to focus on that, uh, the starving factor before the working out the interpersonal challenges of a family that has stuff to work on. Uh, the big stuff tends to outweigh uh, or even nullify the little stuff. Um, I remember the first time I realized that um, my sufferings were not as bad as the rest of, uh, you know, probably most of the world, was when gas went over a dollar for the first time in my life. I vividly remember it. It was 2003, and I was driving my 1992 uh no, excuse me, not 2000. Yeah, 2003. I was driving my 1992 black Jeep Cherokee Laredo that got 16 miles to the gallon. And of course, my favorite things to do were to go other places than around town. So when gas jumped up over a dollar and then kept jumping, I remember saying to my parents, uh, wow, well, this is just going to be the end of the world for me. And my mother, in her infinite wisdom, would just say, uh, the fact that you can complain about gas prices going over a dollar and still do what you want to do means that you are you got it pretty good sort of thing big stuff tends to nullify the little stuff and being that i didn't have to worry about uh having a meal or you know having an allowance um, i was able to worry about gas going over a dollar and the last thing it's important to remember is that everybody suffers it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what you do, you are going to suffer in some way. And it might not be the big stuff, but there might be some little, or there will be some little stuff that will get to you. Now, in all of that, all of that, you know, talking about suffering, I cannot think of any particular place where somebody would boast in any of that. You know, and, and so it's so interesting to hear Paul say, we are going to boast in our suffering. I can't imagine any sort of situation where somebody says, hey, how are you today? And the person says, I'm doing great. Let me tell you just how crazy my family is. You know, they're so crazy. It's amazing. Or um, how are you today? Well, you know, my health is just so bad right now. And I'm just so excited about it. That that's not how we tend to think about our suffering. Um, and so the question can be asked, what is it that Paul is talking about? Is he talking about the same suffering that we all go through? And it's actually, he's not. Um, the Greek word that is used for suffering or trial, um, depending on what 
you know, version of the Bible you're reading is actually meant to be understood as more um, a suffering that's caused by some sort of trial and it's some sort of testing here. And so what Paul is really talking about when he's talking about suffering, he's talking about the parts of our lives that we want or need God to work on via our faith and the Holy Spirit. So it's not like Paul is saying, hooray, get excited for not having any food, or hooray, get excited for your family just driving you up a wall. That's not what he's talking about at all. He's saying more um, boast in the fact that you and God are working on some part of your life. Now, I do, it is important to, you know, because um, when we do talk about um, uh, God working on a part of our life, we like to say God's working on me. But the real fact is, is that God can do everything in the world, but if we don't sort of go with that leading, if we don't make that choice to uh, work on what God is guiding us to be worked on, it's not going to happen. So that's why I say God and I are working on this together. That is the sort of suffering that Paul wants us to boast in. So, and when we think about him saying boasting about suffering in that way, it all sort of makes sense. It all sort of falls into place. So God and I are working on this. And guess what? Because of that, there is going to be a challenge to me and it's going to be suffering. But because I want to get somewhere different, I want to be at a different place. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to push through the suffering. That's an IE, the perseverance. And once I learn that I can persevere, and that becomes a part of who I am, i.e. character. And once I have that sort of new part of me, I have a different, and perhaps a better outlook on things, i.e. hope. So once we set up what suffering, the suffering is that he's actually talking about, that is a very, very logical linear progression. It all makes sense. And it seems to me like that might work for just about anything. Now, when considering uh, the different parts of our lives that perhaps need to be worked on, um, that cycle or that you know, following that uh, linear progression might be longer for some of us. Um, I still, I feel like that would work for just about anything. And like I say, um, there's all sorts of ways we could go with this, but I want to focus on one issue this morning. Um, because right now, this is an issue that all Christians everywhere are having to face, and that is our identity as Christians. What does it mean to call ourselves followers and witnesses with a commission, a great commission, to make disciples of all nations and followers of all nations. How do we do that when the world is nuts and fighting about it? What is Christian identity that produces more fruit during a time when we are quasi locked in our houses, visit perhaps physically sick and mad about some part of something that is going on in the world? Because there are, there are some crazy things going on right now. And they are commanding our attention, and they are commanding our energy. And it's not a little bit of energy, too, and it's not just a little bit of attention. It's a lot. And those things perhaps not only cause us to question who we are as an individual, but perhaps some of the big issues that are going on right now um, make us feel like who we are or who we think is important uh, to be is not of value anymore. Perhaps we feel like what's important to us is on the verge of being tossed out. And we all have that, um, and we all have every possibility to be on the verge of an almost existential nightmare on either sides of whatever current issue is your thing. And if we are feeling that pressure, if we are feeling a sense of angst or strain based off of how we feel it's important to feel about something, 
then we know that we are actually where we know where we are actually deriving a great deal of identity from. If we're more caught up in being correct and to be on the winning side of whatever issue that we choose for the sake of what other people think about us, then our source of identity is in the wrong place. If we get so caught up in, you know, and start feeling all of the attention or our blood boiling about something and we know that we've got to be on the right side of that issue and proclaim it, then our source of identity is in the wrong place right now. Now, I'm not saying that the issues of today are not important. They are. And there are, on either side of any issue you want to pick, there are questions that need to be answered and um, we are the people who are the ones who need to be helping find answers. But if those issues become the things that we use to define ourselves first before a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ who is trying to you know, make others into that, we are doing it wrong. That source of identity then, the source of who we are, perhaps that's the thing that we need to put at the start of Paul's progression of suffering that leads to hope. We, for, we need to feel the suffering of losing a bit of those different identities that we hold on to, knowing that we will come out a transformed person who will have a much better shot at creating new followers and new believers. You can ask, cool, good idea. How? Where do I start this process? That's where this meal comes in. It all starts, everything, all Christian identity should start with this meal. And this meal, um, you know, that we call Holy Communion speaks to what Paul says in verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even now, even when we are guilty of honestly letting other things distract our attention and our energy and affect our effectiveness, of um, being a, a, a disciple, Christ still calls us back, reminds us how much we are loved, and offers a tactile reminder of that love and forgiveness. Christ always does that for us. You know, I, uh, any time that I, I, that I talk about um, or think about the idea of turning away or needing something to be worked on, I'm always reminded of that image of the prodigal son and how does the father receive him? Not in the sense of, well, you need to come back to me crawling on your hands and knees, groveling, and once you grovel and crawl enough, I might consider cooking you a ham sandwich. Not at all. With open arms, going out to embrace his son, and giving everything back to him. That's what Christ does for us, even when we let our uh, thoughts and our energy be uh, defined by something else. This meal and everything in it, every, when I say everything in it, I mean all of the, the love, all of the suffering, all of the care for us. When I say everything in it, that's the stuff I'm talking about. This meal and everything it takes to put this meal on should be the basis for how we use our thoughts and our energy. If, when given the opportunity to spend time and energy on those less important things, which are still important, but not important compared to the, um, to the important nature of God revealed to us in Holy Communion, if when given the opportunity to spend time and energy on those less important things, uh, when that comes up and we shift 
our time and energy and thoughts back to this meal and promoting this meal, if we keep trying to do that, then we truly are working side by side with God on us. And uh, as we are honed by that process, we'll eventually come into a person who truly has hope in their life, who truly has something deeper that cannot be touched by all of the things that are going on right now. You know, we will turn into these people whose identity is, is not shaken because it's not in something that's uh, of the world, shall we say. So as we go into a time of communion, um, I want to share uh, a song with you and just give you a time to reflect. You know, people ask me all the time, they say, why don't you play more in church? Well, it's not because I don't like to. It's more because old-time bluegrass music really only has about three themes. Death, love, and who you're going to kill because of, you know, who fell out of love with you. So anytime there's, a, there's an opportunity to throw in an old-time uh, bluegrass song, I like to. And, um, I'm going to share with you a song called Talk About Suffering. And I want to reframe it just a little bit. Um, when I say suffer, when we say when the song says suffering, keep in, in context what Paul is talking about. Um, this idea of that which needs to be worked on, tempered, and tested in our life. And uh, how even in the midst of that, we keep our attention on Jesus. So I'd ask you to take... Uh, uh, in, in this time to just um, look at the, the quotes that pop up and consider um, what does communion mean for you in your life right now and uh, what is what might God be calling you to suffer through for the sake of uh, your growth as a person.
and leave this world of sorrow and trouble here below. Let's have a word of prayer. God, we give you thanks for the promise that we are yours and that we are your creation and that you continue to uh, work on us. We pray that as you continue to craft us and create us, that we will have the courage to work with you uh, so that we might have a uh, deeper awareness and grow into who you truly have created us to be. God, we give you thanks for the promise that even at our, even when we're at our worst, that Christ died for us then and that Christ loves us so much that there's nothing that we can do to separate us from that love. God, we ask now that as we partake in this holy meal, that we will be drawn closer to you. For it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Now on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after he gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you now to partake in the bread that you have with you. And then in the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now I invite you to partake in your in your cup that you have with you. Now our Lord reminds us that as often as we eat this bread, and as often as we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. I hope that you um, have found not only this Sunday, but all of the Zoom worships that we have done to be meaningful. And I hope that you are uh, eagerly looking forward to um, coming together next week in a different format. And I hope that um, as you continue to uh, suffer and boast in those sufferings and go through that process, that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray this. Amen. I hope that y'all have a lovely rest of your day. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you uh, next week in some way, shape, or form. See y'all later. Y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.